All right, you guys are tuning in. The question is out there. Do girls suck at basketball? Let's debunk the myth right now. What's going on everyone? It's your boy Dez360 and welcome to Hoop Scoop where we talk all things basketball, all things hoop. Look guys, we're gonna get right into it. Today we're talking about that controversy. Something that needs a lot more love, something that needs a spotlight, something that needs to be talked about. And um, that's women's basketball, you know, AKA girls basketball. You hear that thing. Do girls suck at basketball? We're really gonna talk about it and figure out why is it that women's basketball, there's such a, a disparity, you know, in inequality between the support that women's basketball gets and men's basketball gets, right? Of, like, I wanna hear what you guys have to say, but we're gonna talk all about it right now. So make sure to like, comment, subscribe, a little bit about myself. My name is Des360, I'm a former professional basketball player. I lived in the Philippines for two years. I lived in Mexico for one year, traveling the world with the ball, doing what I love, connecting with people, and now I'm here to connect with you and talk hoops. And um, let's go, let's get right into it, guys. So here it is, can we debunk this myth that Girls suck at basketball, you know. Um, first off, I'm gonna say one thing. I've watched basketball uh, at every level, right? Uh, I've watched men's basketball and I've watched women's basketball at every level, literally. I dated, you know, female Hooper. So I watched it in high school, um, I watched it in college, and I have uh, friends that played pro that are females. So like literally what, what I can say is, I mean, girls can hoop. But for whatever reason, we all think like, oh, they suck or for whatever reason, you know, and, and I'm not saying we all think that I'm when I say the we all think it means like the numbers. It's like, look, I'll pull up a, a stat real quick. Um, the minimum salary for a WNBA player with two years of service will rise from forty two thousand dollars annually to fifty seven thousand beginning in 2020 <laughs> come on now 57 bands that's it right and and, and then the, oh there was an uh, ad addition during 2020 the average pay for a WNBA player was roughly 116,000 the league has previously said the new agreement raises the base salary to 130,000 and creates additional bonuses and prize pools that can allow uh, 53% more compensation and can earn more than 500,000 a year in cash, which is more than triple the maximum cash compensation, according to the league. Which sounds cool, I guess, but then you turn to the NBA. I'm not even going to bring up the contracts because you already know what they are. 100 million, 200 million, super max, 40 mil a year. Right. And WNBA players, for whatever reason, at this time, can never achieve anything like that. Do you guys think that's fair? Right. Why do you think that is? Is it because they're not dunking the ball as much, even though there are some females that can dunk like Lisa Leslie, Candace Parker, like there are greats in the WNBA, straight up hoopers. But for whatever reason, there's this huge disparity and I want to hear from you guys, you know, like for me initially, I'm like, OK, and I, I watch college ball. So like I was watching last night um, and we'll get into that. I will do a react. We'll do a react right now. You know what? Because these girls can hoop like I, I was watching basketball and I was like, wow, the fundamentals are on another level. Honestly, women's basketball, there's more fundamentals there than in men's basketball, just because I think. You know, yeah, there's athleticism. Men are, are slightly more athletic, right? Um, it's relative, though, because some of these females can really move. But let's just say, all right, there are more dunks in the NBA and whatnot. But, like, the passes, you have to be more fundamentally sound as a female hooper. Like, I'm like, wow, they're making the, the nastiest dimes and finishing and pump fake and this and that. So, you know, that that's not a bad thing. It's just right now in the NBA, it's weighted less. Like like in the 80s or even before that, the three ball wasn't a big deal. And now all of a sudden the three ball is like all the NBA is. So, um, but let's react, guys. I'm going to do a react for you because there was some another controversial call yesterday. Baylor versus UConn. So I'm going to throw that up right now. Let's get into react mode. And we're just going to watch this because a lot of people are saying it was a foul or it wasn't a foul or... You know, something happened, so we'll we'll get right into it right now. So here we go. 
So she's attacking. They're down one. Ooh. It looked like a fadeaway from that angle, but it looked like three bodies were on her. So we got to see that replay. What do you guys think? Was it a foul? All right, here's the replay. She's going up and she's getting clocked on their elbow. <laughs> she's getting clocked on the elbow. Like, come on now. One last shot and boom. Oh my gosh, that's two fouls. And I think that cost them a ticket, right? To the next round, to the final four. So what do you guys think about that? I mean, I understand it's the end of the game. Refs are probably, they probably don't want to make the call, but why does this happen like every year? <laughs> There's always some call that like, to me though, that, that was a foul. Um, let me know what you guys think. I think that was a straight foul, but, uh, and then put her out the free throw line. Con you know, you, you get, you got to make those free throws. It's a foul though. What are you going to do? Oh, it's five seconds left. So can't call that. I, I think that's a foul. Um, so, but yeah, super fundamentally sound, you know, there's a lot of noise going on. Like me watching that game yesterday, I was like, it's such high level, like really. Um, such high level. And then let, let's, we're going to do one more react because, uh, you know, Sedona Prince from Oregon, she put up that video that went viral on, on uh, I think it was TikTok or whatnot. And basically it was showing the differences in the weight rooms. So we're going to look at this. We're going to react to it. Apparently the women's rate, weight room had like six pairs of weights and the men's had a whole facility. So let's, let's check it out right here. So for the NCAA March Madness, the biggest tournament in college right. basketball for women, this is our weight room. Let me show y'all the men's okay. weight room. Okay. I, I can't believe that. What, that's the men's. That's the men's now weight room facilities. Look at that. They got all these guys working in there too. Just like, money, then the women. The I can't believe that. I got to see that again. Else. Here's our practice court, right? There's no and way. And then they said it was a space problem as well. This and then now she should look that's their weight room doesn't even make sense it, it, it basically they're trying to say that are they trying to say that women don't lift weights that's crazy yo i'm sorry but this shouldn't be happening right now it's 2021 we need to start talking about these things that's why i'm doing this vid making this vid hopefully it, it just raises the awareness a little bit more because if you are you serious that's that's just there's no place for that no excuses. If that is true, no excuses. Um, let's get right back to it, guys. So as I mentioned, the greats, Lisa Leslie, uh, Candace Parker, Sue Bird, Diana Taurasi, Maya Moore. I mean, the list goes on and on. These are female hoopers that have like built up a legacy. I mean, Cheryl Swoop, so many. They're hoopers and, and on, on all levels. So like, what do you guys think? What is the solution? How can we get more support behind female uh, sports? I'm gonna talk about, you know, rest in peace, rest in paradise, Gigi, Gigi Bryant. You know, I think that she was really on pace to change the game and the narrative, right? And her and her father, her and Kobe, they, they understood that and they really wanted to change the narrative when it came to female basketball. Honestly, probably female sports in general. Um, that, that there is a lot of talent there and there should be more emphasis on and, and on supporting that. So I know that was probably part of her mission. So we, we don't, we don't want to forget about that, guys. We want to keep that going. We need to raise that awareness. We need to get behind these female hoopers. I mean, when I was going to my ex-girlfriend's games and all that, I mean, it was exciting. It was fun. You want to be there and, and support and whatnot. And just, and then I have friends that are female hoopers, like they can go. You know, so we got to get over it. What do you guys think it is that it's that wall, that barrier? You know, is it an ego thing? Is it a it's I don't think it's a funding thing. You know, um, is it a business aspect? Are they just straight throwing the women under the bus? Like, um, man, it's that's a tough one, you know, and then you get in these controversial calls and, and, and all that. But, you know, that's all I want to say, guys. Let's get the conversation going. Let's keep the discussion going. It needs to be, it needs to keep on going. Um, hope you guys appreciate that hoop scoop. Just showing my respects, weighing in, and uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let's talk about it. Oh yeah, myth debunked. Girls do not suck at basketball. All right, Des three sixty. I'll see y'all next time.